What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 10 worst WWE Championship reigns of all time, man. So we checked out some of the the best WWE Championship title matches, some of the worst WWE Championship title matches. So it only makes sense to check out some of the worst WWE uh, Championship reigns, man. And unfortunately, there's been some uh, not good ones, man. Ones you tend to not even really remember. <laughs> so we're gonna check this out. Appreciate all the love and support by Parts for Unknown. Thanks to the original video. Y'all already know. Down below. Let's do this. Vincent thing. James McMahon created the Worldwide Wrestling Federation World Heavyweight Championship in 1963. He didn't really mean I can't worldwide. Hear what he, was saying. he meant New York <laughs> and its surrounding areas, which is a world in and of itself. So with that being said, I am 100% sure he thought that over 50 years later, the title would be used for a failed expansion into India. Worldwide <laughs> indeed. The he WWE deserves to be on the list. is the most prestigious title in all of pro wrestling with some of the greatest and most important reigns in all of wrestling history. But those are reigns that we talked about last week. Those reigns, those were the Roman reigns. These <laughs> reigns, these are the Luther reigns. The absolute worst reigns of the last 60 years. This title has seen the best of times and it has seen the blurst of times. These are the blurst of times. I'm Tempest Hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are the 10 the worst WWE best. Championship reigns of all time. But before we get on with this I list, make out. sure, of course, that you subscribe and enable notifications to always on so you never miss a fun list just like it. And check out the newest episode of Survival Series here on Parts Fun Known, detailing every single United States champion of all time. You'll like it. Sean Ross Sapp is on this one. <laughs> Number 10, Alberto Del Rio. Ooh. Pardon me, that is notable prick, Alberto Del Rio. How could I be so foolish? Alberto Del Rio was earmarked for greatness upon his WWE arrival in 2010, beating Rey Mysterio on his first night in the company and winning the Royal Rumble match just months later. All signs pointed to Del Rio's imminent coronation and then he lost at WrestleMania and at Extreme Rules. Then CM Punk got hot and all of a sudden yep. Del Rio on top wasn't as appealing an option, but nope. that didn't stop WWE from pulling the trigger on him at SummerSlam, cutting the summer of Punk short at the so worst possible stupid. moment. What followed was two short, very bad reigns for Del Rio. Oh his God. first, which ended in five weeks, and his second, the subject of this entry, which lasted one week longer. Maybe the best example of a title not elevating the talent, but being made to look worse by being around the waist of a complete so stupid. loser. Let me paint a quick picture. It is Halloween night. WWE champion Del Rio is booked in a raw match against the Big Show, a man he is not feuding with at the time. They go 13 minutes and Big Show knocks him out and pins him clean. This is not the start of an angle. This is not the end of a feud. Just the WWE champion losing clean because he was a notable loser. Parentheses and also a prick. Number nine, <laughs> The Miz. Anyone who has been him. following this channel for any significant amount of time will be shocked. Utterly, utterly shocked to learn that I was maybe the most excited little lad in all the land when Mike the Miz cashed in Money in the Bank on Randy Orton to win his first ever WWE Championship. I was just, I think I watched that live. I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, no, no. Chip <laughs> in November of 2010. It was a new star on top, something that felt like it had been built the picture. for quite some time. Little did oh, no, the, oh, he didn't show the picture of the little girl, man. <laughs> did I know the six months that were to come? The six months of playing third fiddle in his own WrestleMania main event title yep. defense. The six months of not being able to beat anyone besides Jerry Lawler. The six months that killed just about any <laughs> hope The Miz had of being a consistent main event talent and killed my interest in him going forward. That Mania match really is awful. Yeah, yeah, there's a double count out and the laptop and the rock standing tall despite not being in the match, but God damn if it wasn't awful before that too. <laughs> the Miz certainly has a place for himself in WWE, but closing shows as WWE no. champion just wasn't it. No. Number eight, Sid. Is it Sid? The question that has permeated the universe since cells came together to create higher thought. What? When man <laughs> first spoke, he asked, is it Sid? On the eighth day, the Lord created the question, is it Sid? The first line what? of text deciphered from the Rosetta Stone read, is it Sid? <laughs> is it when Larson Sid? gifted Steve a softball, it was signed by someone. Is it is Sid? Sid? <laughs> someone ended their WWE Championship reign by sh his pants. Is it Sid? And when one asks who had the worst WWF Championship reign of 1997, 
it shouldn't even be a question. This is Number it? seven, Sergeant <laughs> Slaughter. Dang, you know, I he didn't even go into he just went into is it Sid? I have a lot of respect for Sergeant Slaughter as a wrestler. One of those legendary wrestling characters from a golden era, he had some truly great tag matches alongside Don Carnoodle against Ricky Steamboat and Jay Youngblood, managed to get a real major brand deal with G.I. Joe away from WWE. Which is crazy. He demands respect. For sure. His WWF championship reign, on the other hand, that almost demands to be forgotten. He is a name that feels like he should have been WWF champion, but the body of work that came with the reign the world ended up getting consists entirely of Slaughter being made to be an Iraqi sympathizer at the head of the Persian Gulf War yeah. and losing to Hulk Hogan after two months in one of the most panned WrestleMania main events of all time. Yeah. That was my favorite episode of G.I. Joe. When the good guys became war sympathizers to own the marks. It was a bad <laughs> idea that did bad business. And it doesn't matter how many times Bruce Pritchard tries to say it was bomb threats that moved WrestleMania 7 indoors. The truth is the only thing that bombed was this title reign. <laughs> Number six, JBL. Somewhere along the way, the idea that JBL sucked as WWE champion became a hot take, and I will not stand for it. I will admit that the man knew how to get heat. Oh, Often for sure. Times the kind of heat I wouldn't want on my wrestling yeah. show, be it goose stepping in Germany or chasing Mexicans across the U.S. border. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah, he was hated. But I dare any of you to go back and watch all 280 days of John Bradshaw Layfield's WWE Championship reign with all his horrible pay-per-view matches and rivalries with The Big Show and Undertaker and tell me it was good. People didn't buy him as a pay-per-view main eventer after only ever being shown to be a tag guy in the APA to that point. I think... I, I enjoyed the feud he had with John Cena. I think what it was is just his character got over more than the actual in-ring work. That's one of the few times his heel work was so, so good that it got over. Like, you legitimately wanted to see this guy get his ass beat. But at the same time, his in-ring work at the, in, at that time wasn't i guess you could say someone that you would think that would hold the title for that long you know what i'm saying so i get it i get why some people may look back on it and be like ah it wasn't all that but at the same time his heel work was fantastic i ain't gonna lie to you so that's why i think some would give him a pass he has some decent feuds i'm not gonna sit up there and say all his feuds are trash and need i reiterate that this reign went on for 280 days the undertaker was wwe champion four times and even combined he was never champion that long there is a reason smackdown was considered the worst wrestling show of the year in 2004 and a lot of that has to fall on the guy who was in the main events for two-thirds of the year number five oh, bray no. wyatt oh, at no, the no, very I least bray wyatt won the right. wwe championship in a great match at elimination chamber Bats. 2017 unfortunately that is where my praise for wyatt's lone wwe title reign ends that's where it ends dead ass him winning, the crowd going crazy, him coming back on SmackDown, and the crowd chanting, you deserve it, have the whole world in your hands. Great. And after that, it, it went downhill quick. His 2017 rivalry with Randy Orton made no f sense. Uh, Orton refused to face Wyatt at WrestleMania, but then was like, LOL, JK, when a new number one contender was crowned and committed arson, burning down Bray's shrieking shack and putting a quote unquote crucifix in the spirit of Sister Abigail or something. Uh, but that only made Bray more evil. So evil, he was able to project maggots onto the ring at WrestleMania, where he lost the title in his only pay-per-view title defense in a f horrible match. Bray would go on to have even wackier adventures with the Universal title later on, but for his one and only reign as WWE champion, it is hard to imagine him doing worse. 2017 oh was gosh. a bad year, full of bad WWE title reigns, and somehow this wasn't even the worst one. He Number four, so much Big better. Show. The Big Show is someone who looks like he should be a wrestling champion. And, to be fair, his 2012 run as World Heavyweight Champion is actually pretty solid. Both his reigns as WWE Champion, however, mm. amount to a big show-sized piece of poo. His month-long 2002 reign was bad, but his run in 1999 had every single thing wrong with it. From the blatant false advertising bait-and-switch of replacing Steve Austin with Big Show at Survivor Series mm -hmm. to the all-time horrible feud with the Big Boss Man yeah. over Big Show's not-so-recently-deceased father, culminating in one of the 10 worst WWE Championship matches of all time in Armageddon, watch Adam's list to find out the other nine, to mm -hmm. losing the title back to Triple H after only 50 days. Big Show's first year in WWE ended with a giant wet fart, and somehow they still chose to include him in the main event of WrestleMania three months later. Yeah. I mean, it's your own fault at that point. You knew what you were getting. Number three, 
Diesel. Oh, Get Luke Owen in a room alone for 10 minutes, and by the end of it, he will be telling you that Kevin Nash told him that he was the highest-drawing WWF champion ever. <laughs> he said it in TNA, and TNA never lies. The Diesel was a bad WWF champion drum has been beaten again and again for yeah. almost 30 years at this point. You know the talking points. Steroids were on the outs in WWE, so Vince looked at the tallest guy he could find and say, here, have a belt. 1995 is considered the worst year for WWF by almost every metric. He had matches like the SummerSlam main event mm. with Mabel, and it isn't all Kevin Nash's fault by any means. Yeah, for Once sure. Once WWE put the strap on him, they threw aside all the things that made him a badass killer, like what was seen at the 1994 Royal Rumble, and had him singing carols and wishing everyone a Merry Christmas by the end of the year. It's like they never understood that not every top babyface needs to be Hulk Hogan. Roman mm -hmm. Reigns didn't need to be John Cena, nope. and Diesel didn't need to be Hogan. Facts. If Diesel got to be a vicious monster, would he be on the list? We have no way of knowing. Interesting Number point. Number two, all the really short ones. Dearly <laughs> beloved, we are gathered here today to mourn the WWE Championship <laughs> reigns that were ended before Tempest could think of anything to say about <laughs> any of them individually. Stan Stasiak, nine days. Andre the Giant, one minute, 48 seconds. Oh. The Undertaker, six days. Hulk Hogan, one day. Yokozuna, <laughs> oh, two wow. minutes, six seconds. Wow. Paul Backlund, three days. Bret Hart, one day. Damn. Kane, one day. Yep. The Rock, seven days. Mankind, one day. Jeez. Mr. McMahon, four days. Kurt Angle, 15 days. Randy Orton, 24 minutes. <laughs> Triple H, two hours. <laughs> Batista, two days. <laughs> John Cena, three minutes, 15 seconds. Rey Mysterio, one hour, 15 minutes. Yep. Y'all for that one for real. Yeah. John Cena. When Rey won it and <laughs> fucking lost it the same night, I was like, why? Rey didn't deserve that. You know, 14 days. Daniel Bryan, five minutes, 25 seconds. Oh, yeah. That one, that one too tough, bro. Daniel Bryan. One day. Roman Reigns, five minutes, 15 seconds. Yep. Seth Rollins, two minutes. Yep. John Cena, 14 days. The Miz, eight days. May you all be enshrined as the champions you sort of were, and I wish that you all could have taken days as champion away from number one, yep. Jinder <laughs> Mahal. I don't care. Fucking Jinder Mahal is the worst fucking champion. He is, without a doubt, the had the worst WWE Championship reign and one of the worst WWE champions of all time. For how many people on Twitter want to try and hot take their way out of this, Jinder no, Mahal bro. was a terrible WWE <laughs> champion, was. having the worst reign in the title's history. Some might like to say that the story of a jobber winning the WWE Championship was good, and sure, that would have been a good story, but WWE didn't tell that story. No, they Jinder didn't. Mahal was not treated as a jobber who one day lucked his way into a WWE Championship reign and then had to adjust. WWE just decided one day that Jinder Mahal was a main event talent, yeah. and we all had to sit through it for the next six months, despite six. the fact that Jinder never learned how to wrestle any other style than a jobber's style. Congrats on killing Shinsuke Nakamura's momentum, Facts. having five terribly boring pay-per-view matches, oh. throwing out casual racism on SmackDown, and not boosting business in India in any way. Nope. Normally, I like to take the chaos approach to watching Vince McMahon's WWE because it helped me save some brain cells, but Jinder as champion killed those brain cells through intense boredom. Cheers if you really love this reign, I suppose. We just like different things, and that's okay. And that's our list. Nah, bro, that reign was fucking dog shit. I don't get what nobody say, bro. It was the death of SmackDown. <laughs> oh my God, bro. I was like, you can't be fucking serious, right? I can take The Miz being a WWE champion because at least you know, The Miz can actually go in the ring. Like he actually has times where he can actually legitimately go in the ring, give you a good, good 15, 20 minutes and you'll enjoy it. He's fantastic on the microphone you can buy into his heel gimmick it works he can go gender no bro get get him off my screen get him off my screen it makes sense that I was number one <laughs> I, 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 don't, I have no problem if you like this title reign that's fine you know what I actually want to ask that question. I'm not here to start anything. This is not here to you know disregard what you like I legitimately want to know who legitimately actually like Jinder Mahal's title reign? Comment down below. Let me know if you 
actually thought his title reign was entertaining. This is not here. I'm not here to judge you. No one else in the comment section be an asshole about it. If they like this title reign, I want you to explain to me why. Because for the love, for the life of me, I just... I can't, I can't see why anyone would like it. It just, there was nothing about it that said, you know what? He deserves to be champion. You know what? I'm going to buy in a gender fucking Mahal. So y'all let me know. For those who actually like this title reign, let me know why you did. And for those who didn't like it like me, let me know why you didn't like it as well. As a counter to both things. Yin and yang, 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 yang. You know what I'm saying? Gotta have the light in the dark. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150K. And I am still gonna speak to you to the rest of the world. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next one. Peace.